So you just want to learn the information, obtain the information, so that way you can be well informed and know what's going on. So please do not listen to this information and run off with it like you just opened up Pandora's box to financial freedom. You will get caught and you will go to prison if you try to do this on your own. Today we're going to be going over the craziest scams happening here in 2024 and how you can avoid falling victim yourself. Are you going to send me back my money? So they're plotting, they're planning with now new ways to come and rip you off as we enter the new year. Yeah, scammers are working overtime with one goal in mind, that's to steal your money and your identity. New year means new scams, new opportunities for scammers to come after you and your loved ones. Please, I'm begging you, send me back my money. I don't have money like this, God, please. My mom won't even talk to me now because of you. Please give me my money back. Please, I'm begging you, please. God damn it, please, please, I'm begging you. God, please, please give me my money back. Now each and every day we are progressing towards a more and more technology-based society. And with technology and innovation comes new opportunities and new vulnerabilities for individuals and businesses alike. And as we all know, artificial intelligence has become a hot topic this year. So today I wanted to get on here and talk about these new AI scams that are going on. Artificial intelligence. The biggest scams in the world. It could be terrible and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But what, one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Voice cloning, remote access. You know, criminals now have the technology where they can gain access to your phone or your computer remotely, meaning they do not need to have your physical device in order to gain access to the data on it. So say I'm a hacker. Right. Say I'm a hacker and I get remote access to your MacBook right? or your iPhone that you use to log into your mobile banking app. What I can do is I can gain access to your emails first off before I do anything. That way I can silence your email notifications. So when I log into your banking account, you won't get that notification from your bank saying someone just logged in. Then from there, I can gain access into your banking account right? where I can wire transfer all your money to myself or I can just use Zelle. Zell. Zell's fraud department states that if you were knowingly involved in the transaction and you gave the okay and you authorized the payment to be sent, this is typically defined as a scam. Even if you were tricked or persuaded into authorizing a payment for a good or service, someone said that they were going to provide, but they didn't fulfill on that promise, this would be considered a scam. But because you authorized the payment, you may not be able to get your money back. Now, a few types of scams reported involve purchasing fake tickets, buying fake puppies, right? Sending the payment for these things but not actually getting the item. The puppy purchase scam, right? Now this involves dog listings online where someone will be claiming to sell multiple dogs. They may even offer to let you come see the dog in a public place before purchasing. And after you are satisfied and ready to buy, the scammers will then ask you to make a deposit, right, an upfront payment. And then after doing so, they'll just block you and run off with your money. Today I wanna to talk about gift card scams, but before we get into all that, take a look at this right here. And Apple told me that the card had suspected fraud and that I should go back to Safeway and tell them that I should get another card. Seven went back to the Safeway and they said it was Apple's problem. She then went to this Rite Aid down the street to get another Apple gift card for her daughter. Turns out that one was invalid as well. Now if they got me twice, I will be sick. Sick to my stomach. Gift cards were first introduced into the retail market back in 1994 by Neiman Marcus, a high-end clothing store. They introduced the first gift card using a payment infrastructure, although Blockbuster Entertainment was the first company to do so on a wide scale. And ever since then, scammers have been able to find multiple loopholes regarding methods to steal your money. Everything from large organized crime groups, and these are very professional personnel, right? And they are working with these companies whose sole objective is to rip you off and find new methods to rip you off. But what your everyday scammer is doing is they will go into a store that sells gift cards and place their own barcodes on the back of multiple gift cards. So take a look at this. One of the big tricks, a fake barcode. Yes, fake barcode wow. that peels off on the back of the card. I would never guess that. I never, never would guess that either. That. Now the barcode on a gift card is supposed to be linked to that specific card, right? That way when it's loaded with money, the funds go directly to that card. However, if you place a barcode that is linked to your gift card over the top of another gift card, 
When someone goes to purchase that gift card and they load it with money, those funds will not be going to that person's card. Instead, the funds will be going to your card. Now, another method scammers are using to take your money from your gift cards is just by simply taking a quick photo of the barcode. Check this out. You can go up to the self checkout and simply scan the barcode off nothing more than a picture of the back of the card. At checkout, we scanned our purchase and the picture of the gift card barcode. Et voila, transaction complete. What's more is the printed receipt gives you the remaining balance on the gift card. Americans are responsible for about $15 billion in unused gift cards. So half of the people that get a gift card forget to even use it. Or if they do, they almost will never use the full amount. And companies love this. That is the whole reason why Neva Marcus introduced gift cards to consumers all the way back in 1994 to begin with. As a scammer, we taking that shit off. Mm. You know, I Oh really? Yeah, credit, bro. We credit, you sweeping everything off credit, bro. Like anything. Bankruptcy, all that shit. Like scammers, bro, they know every like coming up with credit, they doing credit sweeps. Now credit sweeps are usually advertised to people who have either experienced identity fraud or people that are just not that knowledgeable on how to repair their credit themselves. And usually these are done by illegitimate companies that are posing as legitimate ones. The only way to perform a credit sweep is if you have a police report that clearly indicates that you are a victim of identity fraud. So a credit sweep refers to the action taken by a credit repair company where they essentially dispute all negative items all at once. And the sweep will basically claim that every item is fraudulent, usually as a result of identity theft. However, unless all items in your credit report are actually fraudulent, which is improbable by the way, a credit sweep is illegal. Curiosity is a beautiful thing, but we must remember that curiosity killed the cat. The dark web is a very interesting place yeah, to browse through all different types of things, but it can also be potentially dangerous, very dangerous in fact, if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't have an intended purpose. Today we will be taking a look at five websites, five services that you can make money with on the dark web. Now although Bitcoin has just recently, more recently become mainstream within the general public, it has been the main currency on the dark web for years now. Now the dark web itself, being on the dark web itself is not inherently illegal. It is only once you start doing illegal things, legal activities on the dark web that you can face legal ramifications uh, and get yourself into trouble with the law. Now we are gonna be covering a wide range of topics here in today's video, but before we get into it, man, I have been seeing people making fake pages of me and trying to get y'all to go over to some Telegram chat. Listen, I do not have a Telegram. You'll never see me promoting a Telegram chat, all right? So don't get scammed. I'm not on Telegram. Don't get scammed in the Telegram chats. Now, starting out, we got EDD. All right, now this is a super, you know, old, super outdated one. But listen, one thing y'all got to understand is a lot of these plays will leave, but they come back, right? They always come back, right? So EDD, EDD is one of those ones that, you know, it leaves, but it comes back, right? It's seasonal. Scammers hit EDD in wintertime. They can get people's information, right? Their SSN, social security number, you know, tax returns or pay stubs, maybe, um, maybe a W-2 or maybe a bank receipt or uh, a business record, right? And they can essentially use this information to file unemployment, file for unemployment and receive payments in your name. Even if you have a job, right? I've seen people been employed the past four years, right? You get a good job. Maybe you're a bank teller making $22 an hour. You got full benefits. Someone can still file for unemployment in your name. So I just find that crazy, right? But that's why I always say you should keep your information super private. Never share your information online too. That's another thing. A lot of people are so comfortable sharing their information online. So someone can file for unemployment, receive monthly payments in your name for disability or maybe a layoff, right? Whatever they decide to lie about. So be sure to keep your information safe, right? Next up, we got fake checks. Now fake checks is cr a crazy one. Some of these fraudulent check um, photoshoppers for lack of better wording. Some of them are so good at this that they sell templates to other scammers templates that can then be used to easily create fake checks now i'm not telling anyone to go out and do this i was cashing checks for like 80 uh, for like eight thousand nine thousand trying to stay under the ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars and so at one point i get a check for like 29 grand and i think man this is ridiculous it's gonna take another month so i said i'm gonna ca start cashing larger checks give them the cashier's check that had been issued by the title company. A lot, most of them were eight or nine thousand. One was twenty nine. So I go in. I say, Hey, my name's Scott Cugno. I need to cash this check. They go, Well, that's odd. You know, this is a cash transaction bank. You can give me that. Yeah, we do larger. Tra okay, let me let me let's talk to the manager. Manager comes out. He says, What's going on? I said, Look, I, I need to cash the check. And he goes, Okay. So he takes the check and my ID and my credit card and he leaves. And I remember Becky, 
the girl I was on the run with, she calls me up. She's calling, what are you doing? The guy's being a jerk. He's, he's waiting. He's doing verifications and stuff. I don't know. I go, Look, if the cops show up outside, call me. Listen, it's all fraud and you can go to jail. So don't get any ideas. You know, these are federal crimes. And they, they carry heavy consequences if you're caught dropping fake checks in you know, someone's account or using an account, uh, opening up an account with a fake identity, shit like that, right? It's all fraud. And, you know, you can definitely go to jail for it. So you just want to learn the information, obtain the information. So that way you can be well informed and know what's going on. So don't be a dumbass out here, man. I think you can commit these crimes and get away with them. Listen, they're catching people all the time, all the time, right? So, and the scary part is, you know, the feds, they'll, they'll sit back and watch you, right? They'll just sit back and watch you commit fraud for years and years and years, right? That way they can build an indictment around you and then, you know, try to put you in prison for the rest of your life. So be careful, be thoughtful out here. Now dropping fake checks, right? There's multiple ways that people, you know, are creating fraudulent checks. They can make one using a template, an editing software. They can steal one from the mail, right? There's a lot of mail services, a lot of mail carriers going around getting robbed nowadays, right? Because people are looking for checks. Then you have people who can get bank logs. Now, what is a bank log? Bank logs are, you know, essentially logging information to a bank account, right? Now, people can obtain these through credential stuffing, right? That's just one method. But there's plenty of other methods that people can use to obtain your banking login information. Then you also have, you know, more sophisticated scammers who can get into corporation and organization um, accounts that have literally hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars sitting in them. So you have people who are opening up bank accounts, right, with fake identities, and they're dropping fake checks in these accounts, overdrafting them as soon as it clears, before the bank even notices that it's a fraudulent check. Because one thing that you have to understand is that most of the time when you deposit a check into your account, it clears instantly. If it's a small check, right, but if it's a large check, it will partially clear instantly right then and there too. So a scammer can drop a fake check into a banking account for $10,000, right? Just for an example, probably, I say probably 50 to 75% of that check will clear right then and there, right? And they can go withdraw that before the bank even notices that it's a fraudulent check, right? Before the check even gets flagged within their system. Because another thing you have to understand is that, you know, some aspects of checks are federally regulated, right? Meaning that it takes two to three business days for it to clear. Other aspects of checks are all up to the financial institution in which it's being deposited into, right? So that can clear instantly, but it all really just depends on the two financial institutions that are, you know, involved in the transaction. One thing you got to understand is there's a lot of people out here that have their own business, right? And they have people on payroll and they got to pay them with a check, right? So creating checks isn't inherently illegal. It's only once you start doing illegal things with these checks that you can face, you know, legal repercussions. So with that being said, people are essentially able to buy checks and they're essentially able to generate their own money. So basically you got people who are going around, you know, finding people with banking accounts, then you got other people who are going around finding people with checks. And what they'll do is they'll merge the two, right? So they'll tell the person, hey, you know, I can make you some money. And they'll usually pull up on them in a nice car, right? They'll, and usually they'll, they'll scope the person out for a while, right? So they'll find somebody that works at a gas station or something, right? and they'll pull up on, on a nice car, they see the overall vision, right? They see how their life can progress and how they can, you know, eventually be riding in a car like that. You give them the overall vision and you can basically just tell them how you could take them to the next level. You show them the vision, you show them the car, the, the lifestyle, right? And, they, and that's how people are basically falling for this scam. But it's not even really a scam because they are getting money. They're just, these scammers are using their banking accounts to essentially scam the banks and they're paying these people that are letting them use their account. So they can tell them, you know, we can drop this fake check in your account. And once we withdraw, we could just basically split the money. And afterwards, you just report it and get the money back from your financial institution. That way you never take a loss. Initially hearing this, especially when you're broke, you know, and down on your luck, it's very easy to fall for something like this. It's very easy to get wrapped up in something like this. So when people are working these, you know, nine to five jobs where they're only getting paid $15 an hour, you know, only going home with what? not even a thousand dollars a week it's very easy for them to get wrapped up in things like this. this is basically what i'm trying to say it's very easy for them to you know see the lifestyle see the overall vision and you know they see how their life can progress like that and they want to start you know coming check fraud too so that is how scammers you know get into people's heads so you know they can get them to do what they want them to do this year in 2024 alone it's estimated that americans will lose over three billion dollars to scams Facebook marketplace scams are still a widespread problem. For some reason, she doesn't have the keys and she says that she's got a statutory declaration from the police saying that it's her car. What do you think of this situation? I think it's a bit of a scammerino. Instagram DM scams, TikTok scams, and especially artificial intelligence scams. 
will continue to grow. Tonight, the power of technology. We are seeing with artificial intelligence, the lines between what's real and what's fake being blurred. Zach Tautari spoke with someone in the Katy area who says his parents got scammed by a fake voice. And wants to warn others to listen to his story so they don't fall prey. Grandma Shirley says her nightmare started when her grandson's caller ID popped up on her phone. The 89 year old heard her grandson's voice. When you got this call and you thought it was your grandson, what was the person on the phone saying to you? I broke my nose and I have stitches inside my mouth. And I was upset and I said, what happened? Then she says another person identifying himself as her grandson's attorney told her her grandson had been arrested for hitting another car and a pregnant woman. She was told pay $9,000 in cash and the charges would be dropped. I just thought to myself, I have to keep myself calm enough to get my grandson out of jail. The San Diego grandma went to the bank and is seen on ring cam video handing over $9,000 in cash to a man in a baseball cap. It's every relative's worst nightmare. I lost my phone and can you please help me out? Hearing a loved one on the other end of the phone seemingly in trouble. Specifically using his name and making his voice made it very believable that he was with his friends in Mexico, got in an accident. But Katy resident Lee Hall says that voice on the other end of the phone wasn't really his son Christian. He mimicked the voice. He says it was in fact a scammer How using artificial intelligence to copy his son's voice and call those most vulnerable. As a loving grandfather, he believed it. He wired him with money. Uh, you know, a thousand plus dollars. Making Lee most upset is the fact that he himself works in tech, specifically artificial intelligence. Now, door to door scams are going to happen all throughout the year, mainly closer to winter time. Door to door scams will be big this year, especially in the winter and the coming spring. What we know is investigators are tracking groups from outside of Michigan right now. And these people essentially target neighborhoods, offering services such as roof repair, snow plowing, seal coating. And what they'll do is they will demand an upfront payment and then disappear without even attempting the work. Warning about a new high tech skimming device popping up at gas stations across the country. Not on the card readers themselves, but hidden behind panels inside the pumps. Grab the reader. If it wiggles or a piece comes off, people will put card readers to steal your numbers. It's really, really easy to skim credit cards and clone them. That actually happened to me. They cloned my UK credit card while I was visiting South Africa and bought a whole bunch of stuff online. It's really important that you keep track of your credit cards and debit cards and other cards and don't allow anyone to have access to them. Watch this. I would have an exact copy of your card. One swipe. One swipe, that's it. That is option number two, clone a card. And that's how easy it is to transfer your stolen credit card details onto a fake card. It is aggravating, you know, how simple this crime seems to be. Police say that these guys were trying to place a credit card skimmer on this gas pump to steal your card information. As you can see here, they used a van with double doors to help shield the man placing the skimmer, while another one acts like he's cleaning the van, but he's really just keeping a lookout. Authorities reported that this happened at 5 p.m. in broad daylight. Fortunately, the gas station was prepared. About a month prior, these gas pumps were equipped with sensors and software that immediately sends an alert to the clerk inside if anyone tries to tamper with the equipment inside the pump. The only downside is that not every gas station has these sensors and this software on their gas pumps. So my recommendation would be to pay with cash inside the store. You don't want to risk your card information being stolen, even if there's nothing inherently sketchy about the gas station itself. Nice gas stations are the ones that get targeted the most. That's where criminals want to place their skimmers. They don't want to place it in some rundown, dingy looking gas station. They want to, they want to place them in the nice looking, well-kept gas station. Now, regardless of what information I give you guys here today, I know most of you will still swipe your card at these gas pumps, these ATMs, and these payment terminals. So if you do, 
You want to go about the best practices and don't go around pulling on card readers and paying terminals. Criminals are really not using physical skimmers that are placed on top of card readers. Instead, they're now using what is called deep inserts. Deep inserts are placed inside the card reader itself, masking its visibility, making the device virtually impossible to detect. The new ultra thin design, which is only 0.68 millimeters thick, is made possible through the ultra thin LiPo battery and a flexible PCB. Now these two things really aren't all that high tech. Batteries as thin as 0.4 millimeters thick are quite common and easy to find. And these days, most PCB manufacturers do offer flexible PCBs. Now this skimmer captures the magnetic strip data of bank cards and scammers do not need to place any cameras to capture your pin as the track two information will contain this information, which is very scary to think about. To give you some insight, data on a credit or debit card is stored on what is called track one and track two of a bank card. Track two only stores numeric code, whereas track one stores alphanumeric code. This means track two cannot contain any information containing letters, only numbers. And track two might also include the primary account number, as well as the discretionary data, such as PIN numbers, as well as the criteria for purchase approval. However, both track one and track two data will contain enough basic information for processing payments. And as well as most card readers will be able to read both track one and track two data. So you must be careful if you ever do choose to use the gas pump uh, with your card instead of paying inside with cash. And I would recommend pulling out your phone while you're waiting in line to you know, purchase your items. And you want to go into your Bluetooth settings. Now, this will not work for every card skimmer. This will not detect every card skimmer. However, it will detect cheap homemade Bluetooth card skimmers. You want to search for devices within your Bluetooth settings on your phone. And you want to give it a second just to search the area. And if there is a skimmer, a homemade cheap Bluetooth skimmer within the immediate area, you will see something pop up in your Bluetooth settings. And usually it will look like a bunch of just random letters and numbers or maybe symbols. If you do see this, chances are there is a Bluetooth skimmer somewhere within the area. Now, me personally, I would not risk my card information being stolen. Yes, your bank account is FDIC insured. However, that does not mean that every even legitimate disputes get resolved. You know, sometimes it could take months upon months to receive money back that was stolen from you. And I have heard of cases where people have been scammed out of their money through card skimmers and have never received their money back.